Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's word to you today. Hey, we have just entered the second half of the year 2024. Welcome to the month of July. Praise God. The Lord has been saying a lot concerning the season that we are entering into. And today, on a very, very important and serious note, the Lord has laid something in my heart to share with you today. Now listen, see, today is the first day of the month and it's important our mind is tuned to the things that is important in the heart of God. Now before we go into all that, I want us to make declarations or make demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? That is the second quarter of the year. I don't know what the first quarter was for you, but listening to me, this second half of the year, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will see supplies from the Lord in Jesus' name. So join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' jesus name amen praise god you see as we enter into the second half of the year the church is going to confront be confronting a whole lot of things and this is the reason while i was meditating on asking the lord concerning what we're going to talk about today and and going forward the lord began to sound a particular sound in my spirit and it's important i share this with you we have to be careful as god's children why do i say we have to be careful we have to be careful with our utterances we have to be careful with our choice of words we have to be careful with our attitude towards the things that we do see recently there are there have been different kinds of voices rising in the church and you see if you are not knowledgeable in scriptures and the things of god see there are two things jesus said to the jews you err because you don't know the scriptures nor the power of god you may know the scriptures if you don't know the power of god you will err if you may know the power of God, if you don't know the scriptures, you will err. So you need to know these two things. You need to know the scriptures and then you need to understand the power of God. Now, when he says the power of God, he's not just talking about the power to do miracles. and No, he's talking about the ability of God. When Jesus said, you don't know the scriptures, nor the power, the power there means the ability of God. You don't know it. Now, why is that important? Because your knowledge of scripture may tie you down to a reason that God is just like this. But the ability of God cuts across anything, meaning God can rise up today and do something that does not fit in to your understanding of the scriptures. And it will take you a long while being with God to find out later that God did not do wrong. I'm telling you the truth. I'm sharing this with you because we live in a season, in a, in, a, in a certain period where people are beginning to raise their voices, not sent by the Lord. They sent themselves and they are trying to be the ones to correct everybody. And when you listen to them, the only thing that comes to heart is what Paul said in Romans chapter 16. And I think verse 17. Let me read that scripture to you. Because it's important I show you these things. Because it's very, very important. Romans. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. He says, I urge you, brethren. Take note of this. I urge you. Say, now I urge you, brethren. Note those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them not those who do what 
who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. This is Paul speaking. Why? For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering, um, sorry, sorry, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. He says, take note of them. They speak smooth words. They sound so right according to logic. But how do you know them? He says, they cause division. They cause offenses. You see, I said something earlier. People err because they don't know the scriptures and they don't know the power of God. A man can come with smooth talk. And guess who he leads away? The simple. The simple. Those who are not grounded. And funny enough, those who are not grounded are the ones that will be clapping and hailing them. But those who are grounded in truth, how do you know you're grounded in truth? In these two things, you know the scriptures and you understand the power or the ability of God. These are people who come today and they tell you doctrine, 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 doctrine. Mark them. Mark them. The only one who teaches good doctrine is the Holy Spirit. It's not a man. No man can teach you sound doctrine enough. I will tell you why. Because the Holy Spirit, sound doctrine, most people who talk about sound doctrine only base their teachings on what is written in the Bible. But the Holy Spirit, who understands the mind of God. Now, when I say what is written in the Bible, I'm referring to what they understand from what is written in the Bible. The Bible is not wrong, but men's understanding have painted the Bible wrong many times. So because they don't understand the power and the ability of God. You remember one time Jesus, his disciples came to him and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in your name and we forbade him because he was not one of us. Now you ask the question. Imagine if you didn't hear the response of Jesus. This man was seen casting out devils in the name of Jesus. And they inquired and found out that he has never been with them. He, has, he is not with them. I mean, he is not one of the disciples of Jesus. And they said, we stopped him. But what did Jesus say? He said, don't stop him. Don't stop him. This thing we are into, talking about the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, is bigger than everybody. Is bigger than you, far bigger than you. Your understanding is too small to grasp it. So when God begins to display in his multi-dimension, you cannot cage God by your doctrine. Believe me. Your understanding is limited. And until we begin to trust the Holy Spirit as individuals to guide our minds according to the truth of God's heart, not according to the truth of what you have interpreted the Bible to be. In the days of Jesus, Jesus would dine with a man called Zacchaeus. Religious people will fight him because they don't know the power of God. They don't know the power of God. So we have religious people who are claiming that they are not religious. They are claiming that others are religious people. But meanwhile, they are the religious people, see? They are the monitors. Everything has to be done according to. They are the religious people, yet claiming others are religious people. It's a very funny situation. Why? Because you don't know the power of God. Why criticize other people? When you do such things, guess what you're doing? You are limiting the power of God, the, the working of the power of God in your sphere. You are limiting it. I'm sharing this for a reason. In the year 20, 2018, 
from from 2018 throughout major part of 2019 the message of titan came under serious attack yeah to the extent that even churches pastors that knew the truth became confused isn't that what the bible said that even the elect even the elect will be confused now so the message of tithing came under serious attack people couldn't take their stand anymore people couldn't publicly stand just a few that stood their ground even those that stood their ground they were accused of being covetous because they want people to be giving them money but guess what that landed the world into from all those arguments we entered into covid and the world is still struggling financially economically to come out of that season of covid the church was sleeping everyone how come we didn't know how come because we were all major fighting a core thing in the covenant of god should christians that no we're not supposed to it's not under the law it's not under the law it says mark those who cause division this is the second half of the year hear me we are approaching another season that something is about to hit the earth the church needs to be alert i speak to you as one sent by god the church needs to be alert and for the church to be alert listen mark them who cause division and what avoid them their job is to bring a distraction so that the enemy will hit the earth you see it's not the church most times when satan hits the earth the question comes to the church and the church will have no answers why they were sleeping jesus said watch and pray he didn't say get into arguments he didn't now division you know division is one of the works of the flesh contention division i will not agree is one of the works of the flesh and once you're operating from the flesh it's so easy for satan to take advantage of you no matter how much truth you have gathered in your heart the moment you step into the arena of the flesh satan can take advantage of your knowledge satan can take advantage of your zeal the moment you have a little strife in your heart concerning somebody the moment i look at you and i don't like you scriptures can begin to come into my head to prove that everything you're doing is wrong but what does jesus teach us love the doctrine he says he says mark them who cause division and offense contrary to the doctrine which you learned what's the doctrine you have learned the doctrine of love i may not understand what you are doing today why won't i understand i did not sit down with the holy ghost to give you the assignment whether good or bad so I need the Holy Ghost to understand you. You need the Holy Ghost to understand me. You can't rise up and say what I'm doing is wrong. I can't rise up and say what you're doing is wrong. Except in places where you clearly offend the Spirit of God. And is, is it or no? Your, your ministry, is it by the Spirit of God? Or is it by the flesh? How do you wake up and just feel every other person is wrong? You're the only one that is right. How do you wake up and feel you're the best and the only pastor in town? Everybody was listening to you. That's the spirit of error going somewhere to happen. The spirit of Christ urges everyone. You see, you don't force people. You don't threaten people to believe. You preach the truth. Those that are of the truth will align themselves and fall into you. And let me tell you this. The people that are of the truth, they are not many. So if you're thinking because you preach the truth, a whole crowd will come. No, if crowd comes to you, more majority of that crowd, they are not for you. They come to enjoy the show. I'm telling you the truth. The day God will give you the message to enter into your core of ministry, many of those people will leave you. But your ministry is to edify the body. The work of the ministry is to help.
people, not to destroy people. So whatever dimension God has given to people, if God has given one a prayer ministry, however he conducts his prayer ministry, he is fulfilling the word of God. You don't come and condemn him. If God has said another one, your own is teaching the word. You see, you don't come and condemn him. I told you last week, John the Baptist was sent. Water baptism was not, there was, it wasn't a doctrine. It was an assignment that God gave to him. And the purpose of that assignment is so that Jesus, because it has been prophesied that Jesus will come out of that water. If Jesus is going to come out of that water, something must be happening there. So God said, John, go to River Jordan and be baptizing people there until you see one come who you will see the Spirit of God upon him. So if John had listened to the criticisms of his, of his day, what is this thing you're doing? What is this washing or washing people? Why are you people into water? And he has said, ah, I'm tired. I don't want to do it again. He would have missed the core of his ministry. So when people start, it may be a cliche they use. It may be a sound they release. Leave them alone for the God who called them. I will never forget one time, many years ago, no, no, maybe a few years ago, I was so bothered about certain people, certain things that were happening. And I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, why are you letting these things happen? I will never forget the answer the Lord gave to me. He said, why are you bothering yourself about them? Focus on me. I said, but no, Lord, why? They, they, they are spoiling the work that we're doing. And the Lord said, who told you they are spoiling our work? And the Lord said something to me that I would never forget. He says, son, the deceiver and the deceived, they are one. What is my own inside? I will never forget that statement. The deceiver and the deceived, they are one. What is my own inside? That's exactly how I heard it from the Lord. So those who have been deceived... They submitted themselves to be deceived. Those who's deceiving them, he is like them. So what do you want the Lord to do? What they are deceiving God. Who said they are deceiving God's children? Every child of God has one authority and that authority in his life is the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not your authority, you're not a child of God. And if the Holy Spirit is your authority, you will vet everything through him. So he's the one that will tell you that church is right or that church is not right. He's the one that will tell you that pastor is okay, that pastor is not okay. He's the one that will tell you. If you don't hear his voice, then you're not part of him. Then why should we bother about you? We preach. We compel men. We don't cause division. I'm sharing this with important message on this first day of the month. So that your heart will be guided. If you're part of those who are being lured away to start causing division, refrain from it. Because we're entering a very tough season that God's children ought to be taught faith to stand for themselves. The Lord spoke to me and said, in this season you're entering, it is those who know their God that will be strong and will do exploits. Brothers and sisters, a time will come when your pastor will not have time for you. He will be looking for God for himself. So listen, don't depend on men. Stand firm. Fellowship with men. Are you getting what I'm saying? Enjoy the fellowship with men. Receive teachings, but vet things by the Holy Ghost. Strengthen your own foundation. Strengthen your legs in the faith. For when you pray to the Lord, He will answer you. He will teach you. He will guide you. But don't join them that are causing division. Avoid them. Stay away from them. I'll read a scripture. Then I'll close today. Titus chapter 3. Magida Baradabus. Titus chapter 3. Oh, many things Paul was telling his son Titus here. Verse 8, he said, This is a faithful saying. And these things I want to affirm, I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But then he said to him, but avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, 
and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. They are unprofitable and useless. Why? He says, now look at what he said next, verse 10. Reject a divisive, a divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is wrapped and sinning, being self-condemned. He tells us the state of many. When a man gets up and is condemning every person, he himself is condemning himself. He needs help. He needs your prayers. When a man starts judge everybody, hey, you're wrong. This one is wrong. This one is wrong. Something is happening. There's a trouble going on in his heart. Just like James said, where come? Where does all these woes and wars come? They come from the war that is taking place in your heart. When you see such people, pray for them. I bring you this truth today. Listen, get up. Exercise your faith in God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Holy Ghost. Receive sound teachings from the Word of God that stir you up to faith. Not to sit down like with popcorn and begin to judge people. The Word of God stirs us up to faith. For man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. A pastor's job is to teach you how to hear from God for yourself and grow thereby. May the Lord help us. I pray that the second half of the year, God will cause you to walk in the truth and not a lie. I pray that the Spirit of God will guide your steps day by day throughout the six months of the year and make it a worthy, a worthy year and a worthy season for you. I pray that the rod and the sword of the enemy will not find you. But the Spirit of God will cover you always and keep you in his own mighty hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you. Have the fruitful, most, most prosperous month in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.